I'll be showing Insights in Microsoft Teams for Education. Insights was recently updated and improved, and it gives educators the ability to see the engagement and activity in the classroom, and now we're surfacing interesting patterns. That could be things like communication, assignments, grades, and now meetings, among some other capabilities. Insights also gives teachers little nuggets and patterns that they can use to improve learning outcomes in the classroom. So let's get started. I'm here in Teams for Education, and I'm going to go on the left-hand app bar here and click the dot, dot, dot menu, and we're going to search for Insights. So I'm going to type that in, and it comes right up here. And Smart Analytics to help educators deliver better learning outcomes. So we're going to install Insights on this left-hand app bar. I'll click Add. Now this has added the new and updated Insights app. And after you've installed the Insights app on the left app bar here, make sure to pin it. So right click, choose pin, and then it'll always be there and you'll never lose it. I'm going to walk through exactly how this works. It's improved and quite a bit different than the original one. Now, if you have original Insights apps already in your classes, don't worry. This new Insights right here will pick up all of those. You don't have to do anything different. If you're brand new to Insights, well, then let's just get started. Now, first off, you can see this is the high level dashboard that shows all my classes right here. So I've got two different classes. I have earth science and physical science. I have seven students in this class and 12 students in this class. At the high level, I can show inactive students. So this means who has been active in my class. So in this case, one student without digital activity for the class, and this is five students. Now you can see in the upper right, you might ask, well, how often is this looking at? You can actually filter. So I've got this week, the previous week or the last seven days. So I can change the filter right here. Right here, you can see active students per day. So if I hover, I can show the days of the week and what students were active or not. I can hover for this class and see something similar. Miss submissions, this has to do with assignments. So did anyone miss turning in homework? And a new capability, meeting absence. I can highlight here, six students missed at least one meeting and that gives you information. I can drill into any of these. I'll do that towards the end because we're gonna go into one specific class and I'm gonna show you the whole new dashboard layout and the different cards. So I'm gonna go here into physical science and I'm gonna to click to drill in. What you see now is the updated and improved dashboard for the class. And let's walk through it. So first off, digital engagement this week. I had five inactive students. You can see little trends, one fewer than last week, 23 new communications. This is our whole communication activity dashboard. These are the new cards and these are really cool. And notice how they light up when I hover. So activity, six students were inactive. Here's some more activity for the last four days of November. These five students were inactive. Meetings, you can say who is absent or who is present in the class team meetings you've been leading. And in particular, hey, Omar Knotts was often late for meetings last week. So very specific insights about a specific person. I click here on the right and you'll see I can scroll this across. Habits. It looks like Ella Taylor often works early in the morning. So her digital activity is often happening in the morning. And on any of these, I can drill in. So I'm going to go back to the beginning here. And you can see there's a thumbs up. It's helpful or a thumbs down. And if I want to explore, I can go here and I'm going to click explore. What you're seeing here is a lot of the similar insights dashboards that you might have seen from last spring. This is similar. This is showing all activities. You can see my students here. You can see who's active and not active. And in this case, the blue indicates more activity and the red indicates not active. Now, if I want to drill in, I just click the little magnifying glass here and click to drill in and it takes me farther in. So I could see from these different students what was happening. So I can hover here and I can see the assignment problem set four. It was turned in, there was a message and there's other information like here. View an assignment, turn an assignment. If I hover up here, I can show that, oh, this person missed the meeting. 47 minutes, the organizer was Henrietta, who's the educator. So it allows you to see different activities. Now, all of the filters are similar to what we had in the previous app, but they've been updated and improved. So one thing I can sort, I can go least active to most active. I can sort by name. So maybe I wanna sort by most active in this case. And you can see this group has spent the most amount of time, in this case, on their homework. And I can see all students. 
or I can filter on certain other students. Maybe I want to filter on activities. So I'm going to filter just on maybe files. Who's been touching what files? And here's some examples I can hover here. This person was looking at the homework review dot document. Let's see, James Hobbs. He was clicking on the files tab. So you can get some digital activity. I can also go and say, maybe I want to look at meetings or assignments. Let's use assignments. Now I can also set dates. So in this case, I drilled in on a specific day, but I could set today, yesterday, this week, previous week, lots of options. And I can set custom times. So maybe I want to look from November 13th to November 17th. And you can see it very quickly, it pulls it out. And again, if I want to drill in, I just click the little plus here on the magnifying glass and I drill right in. So, so many options to be able to look at all this different digital data. I can even filter on a certain student. So if I want to filter on Ashley here, we'll scroll down. And here's just Ashley. And maybe I want to look at all the activities of Ashley. And maybe I want to look at it for the range of this week. So there's all the things that were happening for that one student. The last couple of things I'll show in this drill down dashboard, I'll go back to all students. I'll go to the dot, dot, dot menu in the upper right. First off, any dashboard in here you can get help from. So I'll click help and I can immediately get help access on any of these dashboards and learn more about it. The other thing here is I can go to the dot, dot, dot menu and export to Excel. So I'll export all this digital activity into Excel and it'll go to my downloads folder. So I'll click this. Here I am in downloads and here's that Excel spreadsheet. If I double click insights, physical science to open it, you'll see all that digital activity is right in here. There's the summary, there's assignments, communication. So a really rich set of data that you can download and put in Excel, run charts on, sort it wherever you want to do. Let's go back to insights. So we've explored the digital activity drill down. I'm going to hit the back button in the upper left here to go back to this main class dashboard. Now there's other things in here too. There's meetings. Omar Knotts was often late for meetings last week. And again, I could drill right in here to explore. There's also these up and down buttons, the thumbs up, thumbs down. What do those mean? Well, if it's helpful, I can click this and this says, hey, help us improve. What might you do next? Do you want to contact the student, contact the family, other things? So it just gives little helpful suggestions. And if I close this here, it'll flip it back. If I click the down arrow button, the down thumb, it's not helpful. Hey, can you tell us why? And this is ways for you to send information to Microsoft to let us know, is this helpful? Is it not helpful? So these are all the cards that exist in the dashboard. And there'll be more and more of these added over time. The last thing I'm going to show in this dashboard are the assignment drill downs and the grade drill downs. These are really interesting. So for assignments, you get a high level 14 missed submissions. And that's down 16 fewer than last month. That's good. And if I can drill in here, I say check assignment status. Now I've drilled into the assignments view. This is brand new and you can see the different assignments I've made. And to think about how to read this data, it's almost like a little funnel. There was the assignment and then it moved into the who viewed that assignment, then who turned it in, and then has it been returned by the teacher. And then there's some stats, on time assignments, late assignments, multiple means multiple submissions. And so this is really helpful at a high level and any of these numbers I can drill in on. If I wanna drill in on here, and say, well, let's look at some of this data. This is that same type of funnel. So I start with where it's been assigned, who's viewed it, the turned in, returned, on time, late, and you get the idea. So it lets you drill in and see the list of each of the students for each of those assignments. I'll close that. Now I can also filter by student. So I drop this down and we'll look at Terry Klein here. Now the view is just filtered to Terry, which is really nice. I can see for Terry the different assignments, where they've been assigned, which ones have been turned in or returned, and the different stats. And if I want to pull back assignments from a previous time period, I can say load more assignments. So I'll go back and drop this and choose all students. And I want to pull in assignments from a little bit further back. I'll click load assignments. And you can see it added a couple more right into the stack here. So all these assignments are a little bit older but it lets me see patterns that go further back. So this brand new assignments view is really nice to see by assignment or drilling in per student. If I go to the dot, dot, dot menu, just like before, I can get help on this graph here in these charts and I can export this entire set of data to Excel, just like you saw previously. And let's hit the back button. 
The last one that is brand new on this Insights homepage is the average grade. This is really nice as well. So some insights today, one point higher in the last month on average across my class. Let's look at the grade distribution and trend. I'm here in the grades view. And what this shows is first off, what's the class average? And this is just during this month. So I'm in November right now. And you can see some of the scores across the class. There's lots of different options to filter. First off, I'm gonna drop the date filter and I can go back 30 days or 60 days, 90 days or custom. I'm gonna choose 90 days. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this distribution view right here and I'm gonna look at the trend view, which is a little bit different. So that shows the distribution. Now this shows the trend and you can see this dot by dot and I can really track exactly what was happening. 12 assignments returned, what was the class average? 8.2 out of 10, with a high of 10, low of five. So the trend view is really slick and I can filter by students as well. So this is all my students. Maybe in this case, I wanna filter on Terry Klein. Now you can see Terry here started pretty low, four out of 10, and you can see the average for the class was a bit higher, but then Terry really kicked it up and now she's turning in more assignments. She got nine out of 10, she was above the class average. So some really interesting ways to explore the data on a per student basis or at a class basis. And I can switch this view from trend view back to distribution view. So in this case, we're gonna see Terry compared to the rest of the class. So here's Terry right here, 87 average, and the rest of the class 83. And you can see where Terry falls compared to the distribution of the rest of the class. Really cool insights. I can also drop all assignments down and start filtering by specific assignments. So I wanna see the distribution on these four energy assignments right here. We'll do these and you can see everything updates just for those assignments. So Terry's average is a little bit different and so is the class average when I filter by specific assignments. And just like before, I'll click the dot, dot, dot menu. I can export all of this to Excel or I can get help on that page. Now let's drill back out. I'm back here on the main class homepage and I've showed all the different options. The last thing I wanna show is I'm gonna go hit the back button in the upper left and we'll go back to the high level dashboard. And this is the one where it shows each set of insights per class team that I've set up in Teams. I can drill in directly from this top level dashboard as well. Maybe I see this and I glance, gosh, a lot of meeting absences in physical science. I'm gonna click in here to drill in it immediately pulls up that dashboard for meetings. In this case, I can see, oh wow, there's a lot of meetings being missed right here. I can drill in to see the details, get a little closer. And just like we were showing before, here's the students that missed those meetings. Here's the students that were in the meetings. Maybe I wanna sort by least active. And that sorts it by the least active students in the class. So this just shows, I'll hit the back button, how I can drill into very specific things from a very high level if I'm on this team level dashboard. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.